right friends welcome back to new set a glance for 47th week and look at the first one the supreme court dismissed the plea by tamil nadu government for a review of 2014 judgment banning jellikattu here the sequence of events are in the year 2014 supreme court banned jellikattu you may have a doubt what is meant by jellikattu it is a taming of bulls if you see the picture it will be very clear to you and subsequently tamil nadu government approached supreme court and now supreme court dismissed the plea of tamil nadu government and supreme court felt that jellikattu is nothing to do with the exercise of fundamental right of religious freedom and moreover the supreme court stated that it is against the prevention of cruelty to animals act of 1960 so important aspect is jellikattu it was banned by supreme court it is the taming of bulls during pongal festival in tamil nadu and during pongal festival this cock fights are also held in andhra pradesh and during the navaratri celebrations badukamma festival is held in telangana these things don't forget let us look at the next one cop 22 that is conference of parties to the united nations framework convention on climate change this is 22nd conference of the parties at the same time cmp 12 this is 12th conference to the kyoto protocol and cma 1 this is the first conference to paris agreement please don't forget paris agreement came into force on 4th november and if someone says cop 22 or cmp 12 cma 1 all are one and the same and this was held recently in marrakesh morocco please look into this map marrakesh is important city in morocco Morocco is towards northwestern part of Africa having a coastline of both the Mediterranean Sea as well as Atlantic Ocean so Marrakesh action proclamation for our climate and sustainable development is with regard to climate change and this was held recently in Marrakesh Morocco look at the next one national integration week was observed all over the country from 19th to 25th november 2016 and don't forget november 19 is the birth anniversary of former prime minister of our country indira gandhi and november 19 is observed as national integration day and at the same time november 19 to november 25 is observed as national integration week look into the next one india and cyprus you may ask where is the cyprus look into this cyprus is island nation in mediterranean sea and india and cyprus signed a revised protocol for the avoidance of double taxation and after mauritius it is a cyprus and the amendment is now with regard to source based taxation previously it was residence based taxation now it is changed to source based taxation because of this tax avoidance can be eliminated at the same time round tripping can also be controlled you may ask what is meant by round tripping round tripping is looking at the low folds our money will go to other country and will come back to our country what i mean to convey is black money will go from our shores and will come back as white money so this is round tripping round tripping can be minimized with these amendments to the protocols of double taxation so from now onwards that means from 2017 onwards this taxation between india and cyprus will be based on source based instead of at present residence based look into the next one world health organization declared that zika virus will no longer be treated as international medical emergency 
please don't forget in the month of february world health organization declared zika as the public health emergency of international concern this is known as phic phic means public health emergency of international concern and now this 9 month old declaration was taken back and with regard to zika two three important points don't forget zika is mosquito borne virus first identified in monkeys in uganda and two diseases are identified suspected to be behind zika virus what are the two diseases one is microcephaly microcephaly is basically noticed in around 4000 children in brazil microcephaly means the size of the head will be reduced and the other one is galian bear syndrome galian bear syndrome please look into this this is damage to the nerve cells so nervous damage is galian bear syndrome and reducing the size of the head that is uh, microcephaly so microcephaly and galian bear syndrome these are two are suspected to be associated with zika virus indore patna express derailed near kanpur and around 140 people lost their lives and the reason is specifically not known till now and enquiry is on china launched 712 kilometers quantum communication line here two three important points this is part of 2000 kilometers quantum communication line between the capital beijing and another important city shanghai in china so this 2000 kilometer quantum communication line will be established and this 712 kilometers line is a part of the 2000 kilometers line and it is a ultra high security network the basic advantage of this quantum communication line is it is not possible or you can say it is difficult to intercept or tap the information it is not possible or you can say it is very much difficult to intercept or to tap the information transmitted through quantum communication lines right this is all about quantum communication lines now olympics silver medalist pv sindhu clinched her maiden super series premium title in china and she is now at world's number 9 this ranking may change and she won the 7 lakh dollar china open badminton tournament then reserve bank of india has proposed to the finance ministry for the opening of islamic window in conventional banks before understanding this you should understand what is the meaning of islamic banking or sharia banking the other name for islamic banking is sharia banking in islamic banking or sharia banking interest is prohibited the banking works on the principles of profit and loss and whereas our banking system is based on interest so that is the major difference between islamic banking as well as this conventional banking adopted in our country so now reserve bank of india proposed for the first time to the finance ministry that opening of islamic window in conventional banks can be thought of initially before going towards islamic banking or sharia banking right so this is all about islamic banking then india has got 18 atms per 1 lakh population and i have given for comparison china has got 55 atms per 1 lakh population then brazil has got 129 developing country brazil has got 129 russia has got 184 uk has got 130 so in our country the percolation of atms is substantially less when you compare it with other countries 18 per 1 lakh population and india has got around 2 lakh 20000 atms around 2 lakh 20000 atms and majority of the atms are manufactured by ncr corporation 
because nowadays people are talking about ATMs. That's why I would like to tell you some few points about ATMs. This NCR Corporation is the largest ATM manufacturer in our country. Second important point is SS Mundra, Deputy Governor of Reserve Bank of India, is heading the committee on recalibration of ATMs. All of you have seen the new notes 500 as well as 2000 are smaller in size and recalibration of ATMs is very much essential and for that purpose SS Mundra committee was formulated. Another important aspect I would like to tell you Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister and Chandra Babu Naidu is heading the subcommittee of chief ministers on digitization and cashless transactions. So, Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister will head the subcommittee of chief ministers on digitization and cashless transactions. Look into the next one. The Prime Minister launched Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen in Pune. Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban is different. Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen is different. This is for rural areas. And here, beneficiaries will be selected based on socio-economic census data of 2011 that is one aspect and this list is to be validated by Gram Sabha this is another aspect and minimum support of nearly 1.5 lakh rupees to 1.6 lakh rupees per each house will be available and there will also be a provision for bank loan up to rupees 70,000 if the beneficiary so desires under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen, government wants to construct 1 crore houses by March 2019, right? And please don't forget, Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban, there government is giving interest subsidy of 6.5% up to the loans of rupees 6 lakh for economically weaker sections as well as low income group families. So, this is all about Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen, Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Arpan. Look at the next one. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister inaugurated 302 kilometers 6 lane Agra Lucknow Expressway. This is the longest expressway in our country. Agra Lucknow. This is 302 kilometers, 6 lane expressway. Please look into this picture. This is the longest expressway. All of you are familiar with Emuna Expressway. And this is from Agra to Lucknow. And this is the longest expressway. And another important aspect is, 8 fighter jets of Indian Air Force have also landed on this highway. And the policy of the government is to make available landing places for various fighter jets in case of emergencies, right? So, these things are very important. Look into the next one. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi attended the three-day conference of Director Generals of Police. This was held in Hyderabad, Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy and this is situated in Hyderabad. Look into the next one. As per the news reports, informal sector in rural and urban areas is badly affected due to demonetization and formal sector is different, informal sector is different. You may ask what is the difference between formal sector and informal sector? If you look at Mahindra and Mahindra, if you look at Tata Motors, if you look at Reliance Industries, these are examples of formal sector. Informal sector means Roadside Kirana shop, roadside the cycle shop, roadside repair shop. These are all examples of informal sector. And because of demonetization, informal sector was affected badly. And if you look at informal sector or unorganized sector, you can also say. And this constitutes 45% of GDP in manufacturing. And it constitutes 40% of total exports. And another important aspect is 90% of employment in non-farm sector is in informal sector or you can say unorganized sector. And 
normally that form of business entities normally need not be always normally the form of business entities or partnership firms single proprietorship firm normally in informal sector if you look at the formal sector they are private limited companies public limited companies limited liability partnerships they need not be but most of the cases this is true and this is example of informal sector then all india council for technical education and the university grants commission have brought in regulation permitting 20% of the courses to be through mooc nowadays online courses is the buzzword massive open online courses university grants commission permitted at the same time aicte also permitted 20% of the courses through online and before going to the next point i should make you clear about the swayam there is union human resource developments ministries initiative that is the swayam this is online education portal please don't forget this is swayam was launched by union human resources development ministry and swayam means study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds and this is the initiative of human resources development ministry and now as university grants commission and aicte permitted 20% of the courses through online it appears that there are good days ahead for online learning in our country and ins chennai a kolkata class destroyer ship was commissioned into the indian navy's combat fleet ins chennai is the largest ever warship built in india largest ever warship this is 15 alpha class of destroyers there is one class previous class that is class 15 or project 15 that is of delhi class of destroyers and this is project 15a this is kolkata class destroyers and these are indigenously designed and constructed built by mesecon dock ship builders limited in mumbai and the other important aspect is these are named after major port cities kolkata kochi and chennai ins kolkata was commissioned in 2014 ins kochi was commissioned in 2015 and now ins chennai is the third ship of kolkata class destroyers and these have advanced features and technologically superior to delhi class of destroyers or project 15 class of destroyers and these possess enhanced stealth features what is the meaning of stealth stealth means it is very difficult to detect right so it has enhanced stealth features and land attack capabilities right so ins chennai this is the largest ever warship in india built in india so that was commissioned recently look into the next one president elect of united states of america donald trump said that united states of america will quit trans pacific partnership and trans pacific partnership is the trade group of 12 countries it is at to come into force it has got highly industrialized nations like usa japan singapore to the backward country of vietnam so now donald trump stated that he will come out of tpp so now the future of tpp is doubtful and if you want more about this trans pacific partnership please view the capsule then justice rm lodha committee moved the supreme court seeking a direction to appoint former home secretary gk pillai as observer to guide bcci as an observer to guide bcci now rm lodha committee wants gk pillai former home secretary to be observer and when you are looking at rm lodha committee two things are very important one is it is monitoring 
the affairs of BCCI on the directions of Supreme Court and the second one is it is also looking at the affairs of Medical Council of India. So, these two aspects very important if you look at Justice R.M. Lodha Committee. 10 days Sangai festival, this began in Manipur. This is basically to promote the state as a tourist destination. And this is Sangai festival, the name came because of Sangai deer. Please look into this picture. This is Sangai deer is found only in Manipur at the floating Kibul Lamjau National Park. When I talk about Kibul Lamjau National Park, this is in Manipur and it is only one floating national park in the world. So, if someone talks about the floating national park, the only one floating national park in the world is Kipul Lamjao National Park and it is situated in Loktak Lake. This Loktak Lake is very important. Recently, it is into the news because it is in the process of getting World Heritage status. Efforts are being made to get World Heritage status for this Loktak Lake. So, if someone talks about Loktak Lake, it is in Manipur. Second point is Kipul Lamjao National Park that is in Loktak Lake and this is the world's only floating national park and this Sangai deer. This is inhibited in Kipul Lamjao National Park and this festival is held with the name Sangai deer. That is why it is called Sangai festival. So, if someone talks about Sangai festival, that is the name of the deer first point and remaining aspects I have told you, please do not forget this Kipul Lamjau National Park as well as Loktak Lake. Look into the next one. After the demonetization of currency, micro ATMs came into focus. How micro ATMs are operated? Micro ATMs are operated based on Aadhaar number as well as your Aadhaar linked biometric authentication. You may ask what is meant by biometric authentication? Your fingerprints as well as iris abstract. These are biometric signs. Right? Look into the next one. Canadian province of British Columbia. This British Columbia is province of Canada. You can say it is just like our states, Gujarat, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, just like our states, this British Columbia is one state in Canada and it became the first foreign government entity to issue rupee denominated bond in Indian offshore market. Recently, they issued masala bonds of rupees 500 crore. So, the first foreign government entity to issue rupee denominated masala bonds, it is the British Columbia. First Indian corporate entity to issue masala bond is HDFC Limited. First Indian public sector to issue masala bond is NTPC Limited. These things please do not forget and in the masala bonds, the currency risk lies with the investor. Look at the next one. Canara Bank, it opened 111 Shikhar branches. We deliberated several times about the project Ananya of Syndicate Bank because the main goal of these banks is with the use of technology, banks are to be redesignated. Keeping that in mind, project Ananya was started by Syndicate Bank. Similarly, in view of 111 founders day, Canara Bank, this started 111 Shikhar branches. So, these things do not forget. Then Catholic Syrian Bank, this appointed CVR Rajendran as MD and CEO of the bank for a period of 3 years. And please do not forget, Catholic Syrian Bank is headquartered in Trisur, Kerala. It is the old generation private sector bank. Government of India issued show cause notice to 496 companies 
for not complying with corporate social responsibility norms. Some notices were issued. That is not that important to you. What is important to you is what is the meaning of corporate social responsibility. I would like to tell you two points. Corporate social responsibility is a mandatory under Companies Act 2013. This is one part. The second part is certain classes of profitable businesses. Certain classes of profitable businesses are required to spend at least 2% of 3 year annual average net profit for the past 3 years. If the company is earning profit, then 2% of average profit during the past 3 years that they must spend on corporate social responsibility activities. Then third point is, what are such type of activities? Constructing schools, providing water purifiers in schools. SBI has established several water purifiers in schools. Then constructing hospitals, then provision of water tanks, sewerage facilities. So these all comes under corporate social responsibility norms. Construction of toilets in schools, that also comes under corporate social responsibility norm. Right? So, this is about the corporate social responsibility. Then India's female merchant navy captain. You heard about Radhika Menon. Radhika Menon became the first woman to be awarded by International Maritime Organization for her exceptional bravery. And Radhika Menon was nominated by the Indian government. And this International Maritime Organization is headquartered in London. That is one part. And Radhika Menon became the first woman to receive IMO award for exceptional bravery. What she has done? She saved the lives of seven fishermen from the fishing boat Durgamma. From the fishing boat Durgamma, she saved lives of seven fishermen when she was captain of Shipping Corporation of India's Sampurna Swarajya. Right. Look at the next one, famous Carnatic vocalist, playback singer, Padma Vibhushan winner and who was associated with All India Radio for several years at Vijayawada and Chennai and who composed some unique compositions that highlighted the greatness of music and the best philosophies of our country that is Mangalampalli Balamurali Krishna passed away at the age of 86. He was born in a village, Shankaraguptam, in East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. And he died at Chennai. Look into the next one. Yudhvir Singh Malik became the new chairman of National Highways Authority of India. National Highways Authority of India is looking at the improvement of national highways across the country and it has got a budget provision of rupees 22,000 crores and it was given permission to float bonds worth rupees 50,000 crore. Then with an aim of bridging the skill gap in high tech manufacturing in Japanese style of manufacturing, this Japan India Institute of Manufacturing will be set up. In the previous weeks, we learnt that Japan will train 30,000 Indian youth in Japanese style of manufacturing over the next 10 years and for that purpose, now Japan India Institute of Manufacturing will be set up. Look into the next one, former ISRO chairman who held the post of advisor in the Department of Space and who was also a Minister of State for Science and Technology in VP Singh government and who became director at the age of 35 years for Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and who was also the Fellow of Royal Society of London and distinguished scientist for investigations in the field of cosmic ray studies and high energy interaction of elementary particles that is M. G. K. Meenan died at the age of 88. Look at the last one. Bharti Airtel that became the first payments bank in the country. Bharti Airtel, first payments bank in our country, 
started operations in Rajasthan that is one part and second part is it is offering the highest interest rate of 7.25% on savings account deposits. Right friends with this let us conclude this news at a glance. Please do join for other capsules and modules. Have a nice day. Thank you.